getting the Oscar for Best Actor at, it was 29. Uh, you were uh, quoted, you know, saying, just sort of, it reminded me of the Orson Welles quote when he was asked about success. And his answer was, better late than too soon. And it correlated with what you had said about success and getting your Academy Award at that young of age. Most of the students in this class would, you know, you would think, wow, the sooner I get an Oscar, the better. Maybe if you can explain what you meant by too soon isn't necessary, careful what you wish for, uh, you could enlighten them on that. Um, first of all, when I did the apprenticeship of Goody Kravitz, I was told that I was going to be nominated. And I said, no, I'm not. And I made a lot of money betting against myself <laughs> and came out ahead. And then uh, on the day my agent called and said that everyone was nominated for Goodbye Girl, I asked who were the other actors. And when they said, Marcello Mastriani, John Travolta, Richard Burton, Woody Allen, I said, I'm going to win. And I made a lot of money betting in my favor. The next year, I made what could only be called a shitload of money betting the following bet. Quick, for $1,000, who won Best Actor last year? And no one could remember. It was me. <laughs> and I made a lot of money because I knew that the list of those who had won or been nominated for Oscars was as noble a list as those who had never been nominated. And in history, you couldn't tell me who won and who didn't, because it doesn't matter. And uh, I knew, because I was raised in that community, what, how people, um, they may say this and they may say that, but they're going to vote for their friends first, and they're going to vote for best second. And that really is the way to suss it out. And Diddy Kravitz, in Diddy Kravitz, I was unknown, and it was a Canadian film, and no one even knew if it would be distributed in the U.S. And I watched it in a completely insane, irrational, totally psychotic point of view, and was convinced that if any American ever saw that film, I'd never work again. And, and that's when I called Stephen and begged the part. For the part back in Jaws, for Hooper. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, for me, he said my name, and I went up the stage totally, totally calm. And I knew it was going to happen. Then I took it from him and turned, and, I, and you can see this on YouTube or whatever, I went, I kind of flinched. It took me 20 years to figure out what had happened. Really, because it took me 20 years to realize that I was built for the hunt. I was built for going for it. And the idea that I had made it and that people would then assume I was a money maker or I was a star was the least comfortable thing for my psyche in the universe. Because instead, I, instead of being on the hunt, everything was coming to you. Right, right. And it's why I had, I would say, two, three years of being uh, uh, 
a low down on dirty rotten dog. I was a drug taking adulterous schmuck. And I did whatever I could to hurt myself professionally. And 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 then when I, when I got myself together and stopped, I was driving through LA one day and I realized that I did not have one relationship with people who made movies that I could call a friend, except for Steven. And even with Steven, I always had a sense of discomfort because I'm the guy who was dating the casting director once and broke up with her because I, I felt the feet that I was being perceived as someone who was dating because I wanted a job. And I, I just freaked out. So I didn't do what other people in other endeavors call make friends. Simple. That's what networking is. Right. And I had just um, retreated back to my own home and took as many drugs as possible. And um, I did that for about three years. And then I began to understand and then I began to withdraw because I was doing a play in New York and I remember the moment when I said to myself, there's no going back. The only way I will ever be anonymous again is if I die young and you no know, mention to me for 40 years, um, I do that. But what I did do was quit a film that would have put me upper strata. I quit all that jazz with Bobby Fosse. And I did it because I did not want to go outside of the human rights. And I, I knew that I wanted to be able to leave Broadway crying if I had a, an argument with my And I could do that. And I once spent an, an entire day now, I'm not an entire day trying to persuade the National Enquirer not to print a story that they knew was me, that my wife was a lesbian. At the end of that day, I knew I was right. I was doing the right thing. Never said it to anyone. But I began to change my choices 